In this video, we talk about 10 things I stopped buying after going debt-free from over $350,000 worth of student loan debt. And later on, I'll talk about my number one tip for avoiding shopaholic behavior. Yes, I had it too. Hi everyone, I'm Jessica and I love talking about financial freedom after experiencing burnout early on in my professional career as a pharmacist. On this channel, we talk about passive income and simplifying to combat burnout and stress in your life. Now, if you've never seen my burnout story or my debt-free journey story, please be sure to check out those videos linked below. The first thing I stopped buying was new clothing. Yes, I said new clothing. And a lot of you might be shocked at this because I used to talk about clothing and putting together outfits to feel confident in your life. But overall, when we put together new outfits, they don't necessarily need to be new clothing. They could be secondhand and being able to conserve that for eco-friendly living. It also means letting go of a lot of luxury items that are not serving us. Being able to let go of brands just to try to compete and keep up with everyone else. So letting go of of things that are just basically marked up in price because of what brand it comes from. So I let go of a lot of luxury brands that were not serving me and not bringing me extra joy for the extra price tag that they had on them and new clothing. So my go-to is shopping secondhand, whether that means first trying to borrow an item from someone else for a one-time occasion, renting an item uh, for a one-time occasion, such as going to a wedding or um, an event where you're only going to wear that dress once. Why not rent or borrow it from someone else? or being able to shop secondhand. I personally like to use ThreadUp or Poshmark for that purpose and being able to have that eco-friendly type of living where it's not a piece of clothing that will go to a landfill, especially if it was never worn. A lot of these clothes may even have tags on them or been worn once and we want to repurpose them. So that was my first thing to let go of was buying new clothing every single season and keeping up with trends that don't last. Next, I stopped buying home decor for every single season and every single holiday because when we have a lot of home decor around, that means it's just extra stuff for us to store, meaning that we need more storage space. And living in Los Angeles, storage space can be at a premium price. So letting go of having large holiday decorations stored up in closets to come out for two weeks or four weeks out of the year was not worth my time and my joy. So letting go of that and thinking about how can I display things that are more meaningful to me for home decor or holiday decor. That means displaying cards that we receive in the mail. That could mean displaying consumable items that relate to the holiday, whether that's a pumpkin on Halloween or a certain scent for a certain holiday that you love celebrating. It could also mean very small things like changing out the runner on a dining room table. And that is much easier to store than a six foot Christmas tree, um, perhaps. And it also means that sometimes we could rent or borrow items during those holiday seasons where we don't have to store them. And it really is up to you. I prefer just to keep it more simple and have these consumable and smaller items for holiday decor. Next stop, I let go of buying things that are one-time use items in our homes, such as paper napkins, paper plates, uh, plastic straws, all those things that are not very eco-friendly and we use once and then we throw away into a landfill. These can be some easy swaps in our home for eco-friendly living that also save the environment and our wallet every month when we're not buying them all the time. And that could mean finding some old towels or old rags that we can use to clean our countertops with. So we're not using paper towels. It could mean finding some old linens that are great for linen napkins instead of our pla uh, paper napkins. And it could mean investing that small amount into reusable straws so we're not buying one-time use straws and other things down the road. And there's a lot of different eco-friendly swaps we can make. You can also watch another video on all the eco-friendly swaps I've made in my life. There's over 30 over the last few years. The next thing I stopped buying was a lot of extra food. And you might be surprised about this, but a lot of times in the United States, we tend to overbuy in food and waste a lot of food. So being really intentional about what we're buying each week can be really helpful with planning out food prep or meal prep. 
I like to food prep so that I have certain foods on hand and be able to combine a protein with a carbohydrate with a vegetable uh, or a fruit and keep it really simple because we don't want to waste a lot of food because a lot of times um, we are just not using something in, an, in a meal or for an ingredient. So letting go of a lot of extra food waste can both save our wallet and save the environment. Next up, I let go of nail appointments and these luxury appointments that really were not serving me. As someone who is a perfectionist, I used to get my nails done all the time, every one to two weeks. And then I learned how to do my own nails at home and did that for a while. But about three years ago, I actually stopped doing my nails at all with extra polish on them. And this really simplified my life because I would really hone in on when did it chip and having them look perfect all the time and keeping them simple and just cutting and trimming them once a week saved not only my wallet and going to nail salons, but also saved my sanity of looking to make sure that they look perfect all the time. Next up, I let go of getting all these souvenirs on vacation trips. A lot of times we come back unintentionally with souvenirs that we never use or never display and being really intentional with what we want on vacations. And a lot of times on vacations and new settings and new experiences, we want those memories. We want to remember the experience, share our story with others, maybe share some digital photos with others. So those extra souvenirs usually don't bring us that much extra joy. So being sure to see what brings you joy. Next stop, I let go of Starbucks coffee when I let go of the shopaholic behaviors I had. And growing up in a hospital where we had a Starbucks in the lobby, I used to get Starbucks every afternoon as I experienced burnout and needed a pick me up and realizing that wasn't really serving me and getting better sleep and get her better sleep hygiene at night would better serve me. Plus being able to make coffee at home is really valuable. We invested in an espresso machine at home where we can make coffee what we want and that has the ingredients we want in it, the types of sugar levels, the types of milk we want in it, the types of coffee beans we want in it. And this not only saves our wallet from going to Starbucks, it also um, simplifies the ingredients in different drinks and makes sure that we're more intentional with what we're buying day to day. Next stop is subscriptions. A lot of us have subscriptions for different things, you know, monthly subscriptions or yearly subscriptions. I know that I've had them, you know, for TV streaming services and then also for business purposes for different types of subscriptions. So really going through your credit card and your bank statements to see where you have monthly withdrawals or yearly withdrawals and making sure that you're using those services, they're adding joy to your life and then letting go of the ones that aren't. And we let go of a lot of services that were not serving us from that subscription base. Next stuff, we let go of luxury things like movie theaters. So when we go through to a movie theater, especially in Los Angeles, it's usually about 12 to $15 a person. And then if you want any food like popcorn, then you're adding another 10 to $20 per person as well. So letting go of that and just being able to enjoy movies at home, you know, waiting the extra three to six months until a movie comes out into a streaming service can be helpful. Number 10, we let go of holiday gifts to each other. I don't think a lot of holidays need to be associated with gift giving. It's more about those experiences and memories with each other. And overall, we like to think about how can we plan an experience together instead of give a physical gift to each other. So a lot of times that meant going on vacations throughout the year counted as gifts to each other, even if they weren't close to that holiday or that birthday. You know, a lot of times we give gifts to impress other people um, and we give gifts, you know, that they really don't need in their life. They're really extra things that are just luxuries in their life. So thinking about, you know, could you allocate that money to more experience types of things, life vacations together, or other things that are long-term that you'll experience together. Um, in the past, we've given each other trips to the East Coast, to Hawaii. In this past year, we gifted a puppy to our family um, that we're gonna experience for years to come. My number one tip for letting go of that shopaholic behavior you might have in your life. And I definitely experienced this a lot, especially during my burnout story back in 2014, 2015. So make sure that you go back and watch that video as well and see how much I spent on clothing during my burnout burnout journey. My number one tip for letting go of that shopaholic behavior is really to have a plan moving forward and let go of what triggers you. A lot of times that means letting go of one click buys if you're online or in stores. So if you're online, that means leaving an item in your cart for at least 24 hours. 
to make that intentional purchase. If it's in stores, it means not going in stores um, and avoiding going into them and replacing them with another social activity for yourself. Or if you go into a store, asking them to hold the item for you for at least 24 hours to decide if you really want to make that intentional purchase in your life. Combined with that is letting go of other triggers. And a lot of times our trigger is receiving an email for a sale or a promotion. So unsubscribing from emails from brands and from companies that are triggering you to impulse buy and have that shopaholic mentality is really important. And this is great to simplify your life so you have less emails and you have less triggers around you to shop. I also have a lot of advice on simplifying your email and your digital clutter in our digital decluttering workshops that are all linked below. Those are some simple tips for getting started on your shopaholic behavior and letting go as you go debt free in your life. I hope that this resonated with you and I can't wait to see what items you are letting go of on your own financial freedom journey. Make sure you're watching these videos on simplifying and financial freedom. Until next time, spark joy.